So in this video, I'd like to go over macros. And the example I'm going to use is creating an enum for each loop. And so the problem we have, or I have given, is I have a generic enum loop that follows a specific convention. And this convention is you have an enum type, enum type, and then you, the very first value is called first enum type, and the very last value is called last enum type. And the other values, it doesn't matter what the other values are called, but it matters that you don't actually set the value of the enum to be anything other than what it defaults to be. And this is the convention I'd like to establish for creating a, a macro to help write a for each loop. So our solution is going to be use a macro. So I'd like to go over macros a little bit before we get started. So first of all, let me talk about macros. Macros are run by the preprocessor. And one way of thinking about macros is you can just think of them as replacing code. You can think of them as writing a little bit of code that goes through the rest of your code and replaces any instance it sees of that macro with the code with what you define that macro to be. So you can kind of think of them as boilerplate generators. That's one way of thinking of them. So for example, the old way of doing C constants was to do uh, use a pound define macro. So you would do something like pound define five to be five. And this would work. And you could printf the value five. And this would just print five. A lot of times when you're new to this, what something you might accidentally do is put a semicolon at the end of this pound to find five. And then let's do let's do six for this. And this produces an error because this six is literally replaced with this six semicolon and not just the six by itself. So this produces an error. So as you can see, it's just a boilerplate generator. It just takes what's inside here and looks for any time it sees this six token and replaces six with quite literally six semicolon. And you can see why that would produce an error. So let's get rid of this. Another example of inline func another example of macros is to make an inline function. So you might make something like pound define max, and you could take in arguments to uh, to a macro. So, for instance, I would take in an argument x and a y, and then I would have it return if x, and you'd have to make sure to parenthesize everything for similar reasons to this six semicolon. So if x is less than y, then return y. Otherwise, return x. And this would go through and find every instance of max five, seven. And this would expand to five less than seven. Seven. Sorry, it's a question mark. Otherwise, five. So you can see that this would just expand just like that. But there's some more tricks you can do with these arguments. For instance, if you are passing in, for example, I want to have a macro that takes in the word enum type and creates a first enum type. So it just would append enum type, which is what we're passing in. So this could be any, any enum type, like color type, or hair type. And it would produce first appended to or prepended to color type. And you can do this using the pound pound 
operator, macro operator. So we can pound define, let's say, make first. That's what we'll call our macro. And make, make first is just going to take in an enum type. So we'll call it enum type. And what it's going to do is it's going to find every instance of make first enum type and replace it with first combined with enum type. If I didn't use this pound pound, it would replace make it would replace this make first with first enum type literally instead of first color type or first hair type. So this is a this is a trick in order to redu reduce um, boilerplate. So, for example, make first. and passing it in color type would produce first color type. So knowing this, we can make our enum for each loop. So this is an example enum type. Um, it's just following our convention of first underscore and then the enum type, and then last underscore enum type. So let's look at what our for loop looks like now. So we'll for int we're going to implicitly cast it to an integer. And we can call this whatever we will want to. Let's call it enum type equals first enum type. Enum type is less than last enum type plus plus enum type. Now that we have our for loop, we can make a macro that reduces a lot of this boilerplate. So I'm going to have it take in two parameters. One is the name of the integer we'd like to use, and the other is the enum type that we want to use. I'll call this enum for each. It'll take in a variable and an enum type. In order to do a multiple line def pound define, I need to escape the new line. So I use the backslash to escape it. So I can start with the normal for loop. So for int, here we can replace enum type down here with the variable we want to name it. Now we need to set it to be first enum type. But remember, we can't just do enum type because this translates to literally first enum type. We, we need to use the pound pound combination operator in order to combine first underscore with enum type. To help you understand what's going on, I'm going to show how we are calling our for each loop. Now we can just check if the variable is less than the last enum type. Again, last underscore pound pound enum type to combine the two tokens into one token. And then we can increment our variable. And this will give us our enum for each loop. The simple review, um, I just want to go over some a few key points. Macros can be thought of, again, as boilerplate generators, and that's what they were intended as. They're used for other things now. Um, macros can take in arguments. For instance, we have the inline function, which, is, which took in the x and y and just generated a max function, although it wasn't a proper function. It was just a macro that produced an expression in line. 
And then finally, macros can combine two tokens into one using the pound pound symbol. Thanks for watching.